All right, let's make an Android launcher. I want a fully tailored home screen. The closest thing I've come across is Total Launcher, which has some nice features like adding arbitrary images and text, resizing app icons, or even mimicking the Star Trek The Next Generation era LCARS system. But the free version can feel a bit dated and constrained. There's also AP37, a text-based launcher that's part elite hex or matrix code and part minimalist launcher. It uses the Android web view, some trick APIs and user editable JavaScript to render the list of installed apps, notifications or other content you fetch from the web, but only in text format. So it looks like it's on us to make something that gives the user full control and unconstrained UI options. Obstacles here are that an open-ended, what you see is what you get, drag and drop UI would be a substantial development effort and would still require fallback to user coding to maintain full customizability. The user directly coding their own Android native view isn't a great option either, as they would have to work in Java or Kotlin. A greater number of folks know web technologies like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and we can enable them by using Android WebView, but not constraining it to text. The functions needed in this case are a way to get Android-specific info, like the list of installed applications, piped into the WebView rendered content, and a way to get interactions with the WebView piped back into Android. I'll use Kotlin for the Android side. The application can inject JavaScript and therefore add or modify DOM elements via WebView.EvaluateJavaScript insert your JavaScript here, comma null. From the WebView UI side of things, JavaScript can call functions in the form of android.yourfunction and pass along your parameters via an at JavaScript interface bridge. There are four critical files and I'll step through each. So if you want to play along at this early stage, go ahead and fire up Android Studio and create a new project of type empty activity. Android manifest.xml, which you can find in your app slash src slash main, notes that the app needs internet connectivity, will query for packages with .main and .launcher category, and that the launcher app can be the home and default app. Activity underscore main.xml in app slash src slash layout establishes the layout constraints and the web view. Index.html in app slash assets defines the initial content of the home screen as HTML in the body tag with a div identified as app list being a placeholder for where the app list is ultimately inserted. MainActivity.kt in app slash src slash main slash java or app slash src slash main slash kotlin if only kotlin is used controls the application logic. It imports packages, defines the main activity, and loads the initial HTML and appends a list of installed apps to the web view. It also defines what happens in Android when the launch app function is called from across the JavaScript interface bridge. I found that when inserting the apps, it was important to use methods like create element, set attribute, add event listener, and append child instead of just concatenating the app list and then pushing it into the view with document dot get element by ID of app list dot inner HTML equals whatever app list you came up with and using the on click Android dot launch app and passing the objects ID uh, which was already set to the package name once you're in your main activity dot KT don't forget the web settings dot JavaScript enabled equals true uh, which it may give you a security warning for and web view dot add JavaScript interface Android bridge activity Activity passes this and the name is Android so that'll let you call across the Android bridge class using JavaScript in the form of Android dot whatever your function name is. In this case we want to launch an app so the function is called launch app and it sets an intent getting the activity package manager get launch intent from package of that package name and starts an activity with that intent. A few other UI and usability notes. This doesn't run in full screen mode, so the default notifications bar and back home task switch navigation is preserved. This app isn't aggressive about asking for permissions, so in order to set this as your launcher, you might need to go to settings, apps, default apps, home app. The default look has a black background to minimize screen battery usage on OLED devices. And that back and forth between the JavaScript and the Android bridge is really the 
core of the application, but there's still plenty to do, primarily making the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript content editable by a user that doesn't have to be familiar with Android Studio or Kotlin, bringing in a few more Android APIs, and just generally doing some more interesting things with the home screen. Oh, and bringing in more dynamic web content. And as always, get the code at github.com slash tec-ist.